you going guys? Steve here from Straight In 4x4 Adventures and it's that time where I finally get you to give you a, give you a walkthrough of the new camper. Right, so just jumping back just a little bit to a couple of hours or a day before, I'm not sure when I'm going to film the next part of this to be honest with you. I've been waiting ages to peel the stuff off. Ever since I put it on, it's just, it's oh. Oh, there's, a, there's a something satisfying about that. Ah. That just made my day. And I've got five more panels to go. Yes! Alright, so this is the first time we've towing the uh, camper. Technically, I'm not towing it. Jeremy is. <laughs> Jeremy doesn't like being on camera. <laughs> There's a ladder on the roof on your side. There is a ladder on the roof and it's really loud and it's annoying as hell. Alright, so you can probably see it in the back there, hopefully. Seriously, I'm freaking out that something's just gonna like fly off of it and go somewhere. It's a little bit bouncy. It definitely needs some bigger tyres on there to help absorb some of the, uh, the bumps and maybe some better suspension, I reckon. Other than that though, nothing's fallen off yet. Yet. I'll report back. Does. <laughs> around the outside just to sort of show you what it is on the outside there. At the moment it looks fairly basic, there's some decals and stuff to, to turn up eventually just sort of spruce it up and make it a little bit nicer. It isn't completely finished, we've got still got tyres, suspension and I want to do some stuff with the drill bar and make it a little bit longer and, and better that way. But this is essentially stage one to get it working and get it out here to, to make it so we can actually use it. So anyway, come on, have a, have a squeeze. So if you, obviously, if you watch the build series in total, you would have known that this was a six mil composite material. So it's aluminium sheet on the outside, um, like a like a perspexy sort of stuff in the middle, aluminium sheet on the inside. I went the gloss black mainly because I know what stickers I'm going to put on the outside. It'll it'll help it pop overall. Coming around the front, still got the uh, tap on the drawbar. That's still a 12 volt pump, nice and easy. I thought about doing internal taps and everything else, but I'm not sure if I trusted my own plumbing and having water inside that could potentially, you know, things go wrong if I do stuff inside, so no. Uh, the stone guard is actually off my caravan because I put I put a new box on the front of that and this didn't fit anymore. So it just happened to fit nicely on the front here. So a bit of a win in that regard. Actually works really well. You can see just on getting to the tracks in here for this weekend, there's a whole bunch of mud and dust and stuff caught up there very minimal on the trailer so it's doing what it's meant to do which is stop the mud and stone which is good had to upgrade the jockey wheel as well um part this is designed partly for when the bigger tires go on which is also why it's on chocks at the moment that's not to level it up that's to help make it higher so we don't hit our head and because the jockey wheel is designed to have it taller overall so that's sort of the setup for there this is the main brains side of the camper, so we'll start opening some stuff up. So inside, this is all the cool stuff I reckon. 
So we've got a Renergy 3000 watt inverter charger. So essentially 3000 watt inverter. It's also a 75 amp 240 volt charger. So it'll put 75 amps in that 12 volt into your batteries when you plug it into mains 240 power, so short power. Currently, I don't have a DC to DC charger, so I've got no form of charging it when, I'm, when we're uh, hooked up to a car. But I do have a solar controller up here, which runs to a 330 watt, uh, 36 volt house panel, I think it is, normal house solar panels. Um, yesterday, on a good day, we're putting in about 20 amps, which is more than enough, I reckon. I was pretty happy with that overall. Uh, the wiring's not finished. <laughs> Don't judge me on the wiring. This is this whole setup so far is just to get it done, see what works, because I know there's going to be modifications. There's already a couple of things that I'm going to change, so I didn't want to have to completely undo everything just so I could add one more thing or take something out and everything else. So it was just to get it done, make sure it's safe, and then we can modify it as as we go. This is the first camper I've ever built, so I was always going to change stuff and modifications are part of full driving and camping i reckon like if you don't if you don't modify stuff what's the point of doing it really seriously come on <laughs> up the front here was um designed initially for obviously a, a generator bits and bobs everything else obviously we've got the thermal fans there for the fridge that's the back of the fridge there's induction down the bottom so it pushes air in and then extraction up the top so it pulls all the hot air out Going back to cabling not being 100%, this is basically my penetration through the roof to get all the solar panel uh, cabling and the power inside the rooftop tent inside to the camper. It's basically just stuck to the top here. It'll do for now. It's probably going to be neatened up down the track. There's things to be done. Um, battery wise, we've got two 200 amp hour iTech World lithium batteries. Um, if you want a 10% discount on an iTech World A4X4A, little thing down the bottom here, it's going to be the promo code for that if you really want it. Um, I've got these in the caravan as well, and I've, I find them really good in the caravan. So I, I actually shelled out my own money, this wasn't a sponsored deal, to get these batteries. So I've got actual proper skin in the game with this one. This isn't a sponsored thing, I actually rate the batteries. I think they're really good overall for the value of them. I think there are better batteries, but you're paying an arm and a leg for them over, overall. For, for the price you pay for these, they're a decent battery, my opinion. Um, that's mostly it. Oh, so this. The topogy. So this is actually a water tank level, water tank indicator level percentage. There, yeah, percentage. So essentially, you calibrate it for how many liters are in your tank, um, and as it comes out, it'll, it'll count the liters that comes out. The little valve in line with the um, with the tank. It gives you a percentage on your phone and how many actual liters you've got left in the tank. Super handy with this sort of setup. When I've got 110 liters, it's a fair bit of water. But if you're going away for say 10 days. 110 litres isn't that much water, so you're going to need to monitor how much you've got overall. The back storage area. So this is pretty much... I didn't get that. Mm, thanks Siri, I appreciate that. Uh, this is pretty much just the storage area for, for everything. So for me, my pillows and stuff that don't fit in rift, inside the rooftop tent get stored in here. Chainsaw, chair, um, there's a swag you're going to be putting here soon as well once we've done all this. It's just just a big open area that we can just chuck stuff. I think every camper needs a certain amount of just big bulky items of storage. Also if we're doing a, a bigger trip I've got another 60 litre fridge that fits in here nicely. Partly what these uh, cigarette lighter points are for. So that way I wanted to make sure we got the cigarette lighter, po cigarette lighter points up high enough that it didn't interfere with the fridge going against it. It also meant that if stuff fell down it wasn't going to knock it out, knock it over, break it, do all the rest of the stuff. Up nice and high lessens the chance of damage happening to the actual point itself. Right, so I'm going to open both of these sides at once because they're all kind of conjoined. So the back one here, here is the main pantry area and the front one here is the main kitchen area. So with the idea of this one initially was going to be all food and everything else would sort of go in this bottom drawer and then all of um, extra accessories, tools, Bits and bobs and everything else would go on the top one here because my wife Leanne's fairly short. She's got no hope in hell of trying to reach this one, so it was kind of my draw. So I'm going to store all the chocolate and all the cool stuff in here. <laughs> so inside currently, stuff like a, a toaster. Who doesn't bring a toaster when you can't be seriously? Um, uh, what was that? T tire repair kit. My iTech World battery jump start unit. So whether it be for the car or if the batteries go into sleep mode, you need to be able to jump start them to get them back awake again 
so they actually recognize the charge. Just the thing with some lithium batteries. Um, it's basically just a, a bits and bobs drawer was the idea of that one. As I said, this one was mainly designed for food as a pantry stuff. I found that over the weekend, I had all my pots and pans in here, but once the kitchen was out, I couldn't actually get them to the back. So I've moved all the pots and pans, fry pans, saucepans, all that sort of stuff into here for now, and I could stand this side of the kitchen so everything was a little bit more accessible. In, in reality, what that looks like, when this slides out, we've got a, a pop-down sink and a twin induction cooker. And then we've got a big ass table coming out from the end there as well. So once the sink goes down, say you've got something on the cooktop here, if I had stuff inside, that's as far as I could, or on the cooktop, that's as far as I could open the drawer to try and get to stuff at the back. It was very, we're finding it very inconvenient. We can get to all the, all the sources and stuff out the front here. The drawer comes all the way out. It's a big drawer, like the air fryer. Like, who doesn't take an air fryer camping? Seriously, guys, you need to up your camping game if you don't. <laughs> so, I think I've got some modifications to do here. So I don't think this is completely one and done. This is a trial and error. I've figured out what does and doesn't work, and I'm going to modify a couple of things here. Um, Jeremy, who's kindly very much behind the camera right now, suggested probably cutting out part of this, putting in a false back and having like a, a separate spice rack on the front here. I think that's a really good idea because that means you could pretty much have your sauces and stuff all stacked up permanently on view. You don't have to open a drawer at all. It's, it's just there, you put it behind a little uh, rubber bungee. I think that's actually a really good idea. So probably a couple of modifications come up in that regard. Uh, big uh, sink, this is removable so you can obviously take it out, tip it out, it does have a plug as well so you can just take the plug out, it'll drain down. Hits the trailer ever so slightly but it's a trailer, who cares. Um, twin induction cooktop, so it's a 2000 watt side on this side, 1500 watt on this side, so technically it's 3500 watts. Bigger than what the inverter and the batteries can run, but we've ran them both together this weekend and you never run them both flat out. Like, if you've ever used induction, you don't run them on nine and nine eight or on, on the top settings because it just burns stuff way too quick. It's, it's super efficient. It gets really, really hot. Nine times out of 10, you're running at about 50% on each if you're doing it, which is only going to be around about 2000 watts overall, which is more than within the capabilities of, of the setup that we've got here. As far as the electrical setup goes, uh, you're currently using three kilowatts of power, so that's 300 amps pretty much. And it's doing it fine. It's getting hot though. <laughs> so I'm happy with that and how that works. It's off to one side because of an actual reason. It's not just because I randomly stuffed up the cut. Um, it's so you get a bit of bench space on one side. So say you've got sauces and stuff you're doing, you can have all that stuff lined up here and you still have everything else cooking and you can sort of have a bit of bench space left if this is full, filled up with other stuff or if it's not if it's not out, whatever reason. So it's actually done for a reason. Cool, so that's pretty much everything there. With the lead for it, I've still got to figure this part out, but essentially it just comes around, plugs in up, up onto the 240 power point, and then inverter's on, and it just turns on and off like you'd normally turn an induction cooked up on and off. The fridge. I've never had an upright fridge in a camper before, or anything before, apart from like a house fridge. Um, Evercool have very kindly given me a, a nice discount on, on a fridge. I approached them, they didn't sort of randomly offer it to me. I actually wanted this fridge, so I sort of sorted out a deal with them, just so you know, so it's not just me trying to sell it. There's no discount code, there's no nothing about this. This is just, it's a good fridge. So, so with the fridge, it's a 110 litre compressor fridge. Um, it's really good. So far it's worked really well. So we've got a little freezer up the top there. Um, sorry, we've, we've already eaten all the ice cream, sorry. Um, so I think it's a 16 litre freezer, freezer up the top and the rest is all fridge space. It's deceptive on size, I found. I first looked at it going, I don't know what I'm gonna get in there. It's pretty small overall. I'm used to a big, like 60, 65, 70 litre chest freezer, fr fridge freezer. But it's really deceptive. Like the door storage is amazing. It's pretty much all of the big bulky items that normally sit down the bottom of your chest fridge and you're trying to dig stuff out and as soon as you pull it out, all the stuff falls into it. None of that happens. You just basically pull it straight out and there it is. Nothing's fallen down. Nothing's done anything. It's super convenient in that regard. Um, 
a little drawer down the bottom here so you can store all the veggies, bits and bobs, um, salads so they don't go all mouldy and gross after a day. So it actually keeps them nice and fresh. A little light inside as well so you can see everything. Super handy at night. I've got a bit of a night shot there from last night so I'll put that up at the same time. Uh, only thing I've noticed about this is it's not a frost free freezer, which I don't think many of them are in this type of setup. So it, it, it is already getting a bit of fro freezer build up on the outside there. So I think probably after around about three or four weeks, I'm going to leave this on permanently and just see how long I can get, ever, get out of it before I do have to defrost it. But I reckon three or four weeks and it's going to have to be turned off, let defrost and, and start again. Just something to keep in mind with all upright fridges, I believe. I don't think there's any frost free upright camping fridges on the market, as far as I know. If there is, Check it down in the comments, let me know what brand they are, because I'm I'm interested. On that, really like the fridge. Also with it, up here there's a little travel lock. I didn't actually lock it when we we're coming away, so it's sort of cool to open and shut. A little button on the top here, you can lock it in. Physically locks the door shut, so there's no possibility of it opening up. Obviously the advantage of my setup is I've got a door right in front of it. So it was only going to open up a very little amount and then shut, shut again anyway. So slightly different setup in that regard. But still got a travel lock there just in case you need it. Battery monitor. So I, I didn't go with the iTech World battery monitor. I've got that in the caravan. It's okay, but it's very basic. I didn't. I don't actually rate them for, for, for the battery monitor. They, they work fine, but it's just a simple round, round screen. It looks very average. Renergy make a really cool looking one. Um, gives you a bit more detail in the display so it gives you the overall amperage you've got in the battery that's left um, the percentage how many hours you've got left at that um, particular current draw uh, the voltage of the battery amps coming in or amps coming out and then and it's also it also displays watts at the same time the iTech world one does all that stuff as well but you've got to scroll through the menu to get to each individual one because it's such a small screen this gives you all that detail on one screen so it means you don't have to sit there and oh, I wanted to know what's going into the battery right now and this is all in one done nice and easy to sort of sort out um, you can just you can dim the dim the display make it brighter go through all the different settings you can set it to have an alarm at certain levels so if you don't want to go down below say 20% of the capacity you can set an alarm it'll it'll come on even turn the batteries off if you wanted to and you can monitor them better I think with this than some others on the market. It does have a Bluetooth module if you want to pay extra for it. I didn't with this one. I figured I found myself in the past sort of sitting around a campfire looking at the phone going, oh, my batteries are at 80%. <laughs> it's just another distraction while you're away. I didn't want to do it. So I just went with the, with the monitor only. Sits nicely above the fridge there. It's good. All right, so everyone's probably noticed this already. And um, yes, I am that guy. <laughs> Uh, inside here obviously a little switch panel as well so you can turn all the lights on and off. These are just some old lights I had hanging around that I bought from Aldi like 10 years ago. And they're just magnetic lights that stick up to the, uh, stick up to the top. S super simple, just all wired in. Yes, I have a coffee machine when I go camping. This is actually the first weekend I've taken it away. Um, it's actually, I actually bought it for my caravan and then we come away in this and I'm like, oh, I'm so chuckling in, we've got to use it and 100% is coming with me every camping trip now. It's <laughs> love it. Um, coffee machines are awesome though. Seriously, go buy one and take it camping. You won't regret it. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> so on the inside here is like a little command center. So if you're into switches and a little uh, switch pawn, this is gonna really suit you guys. So up here, we've got the controller for the thermal fan down the bottom of the back of the fridge. So you can have it on auto and manual settings so you can control the fan speeds for there. Four USB points up here, so plenty of stuff which is charging all like uh, torches and lights, all, all the rest of the stuff. And then just the standard cigarette lighter, just in case for whatever else. We've got switches for lighting, everything up here. Uh, the travel buddy switch, the uh, fridge power, the can, that's just the isolator for the um, for the fan here, and then the the other fans as well for the fridge. The inverter power, so you basically turn that on, you'll hear it beep in a second. That's it, that's basically the inverter turning on and off. And then you've got the 12 volt pump power for the uh, for the water. A couple of, couple of GPOs down the bottom so that I can plug coffee machine, everything else into there. Everything's nice and easy. It's just like a little command center of power. Seriously, it's awesome. All right, so rooftop tent, I went with the 230 Sabre rooftop tent. 
Overall, slept it up for two nights now. Super comfy, really good for ventilation. Um, there's a couple little quirks about it. I don't think it's a perfect tent. I've actually already made a, a, a purpose review, review video on this. So check it out on the channel. I'll put, a, I'll put a little link in the description to the actual video as well. So maybe go check that one out. Overall though, I think it's a pretty good tent for the price you pay for it.